Welcome everyone back to Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are in the beautiful Retiro train station. This, uh, this train station is super old and very beautiful. Look at the architecture. I mean, look at this. It's great. So we're here in a train station. That means we're going somewhere, right? Well, actually, no. We are going somewhere, but it's actually real close to here. Uh, I just wanted a cool place to do the intro to the video. And uh, I had to take uh, the soup day up through this station anyway, so I figured, why not once again show off beautiful Retiro train station, which we've shown off in previous videos. But where are we going today? Well, we're real close to Retiro. In fact, like right out the door and around the corner, there is a railroad museum. Now, we tried to go see a railroad museum when we were in uh, Quito, or no, uh, Rio Bamba, right, in Ecuador. And uh, that, was, uh, that was a fail, unfortunately. It was closed. We were like five years too late. But here in Buenos Aires, there is a railway museum. It is open, and uh, we're going to go see it. So come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. We've arrived. We've arrived here at the Museo Nacional Ferraviario. Ferraviario. Before we go in, there's like some cool stuff out here. Now, like I said this in this video that we made in uh, Rio Bamba, Ecuador, about the Ecuadorian railroads, that like, I don't know much about trains, honestly. Um, I think they're cool. Like old trains and stuff like this, I think they're cool. I'm just not super nerdy about them. So I don't know a lot. So like, I don't know if anybody's watching this and they know what all this stuff is, uh, they got more information, put it in the comments down below. That'd be really cool. Zora de Villa. These look like little, yeah, like little one stroke or two stroke, uh, like lawnmower or motorcycle engine basically powering a little car. This one I think is like, I wonder if this is one of the ones with like, where you gotta like pump it to make it move. But yeah, these are like, I think little cars to move along the railroad, a boiler. Cool railroad boiler. It's a nice day for this. Well, it's just a, a nice day to be out in the city in general. Like it's a little cool because it is winter here, but like the sun's out, which is nice. A sharpening wheel, and look at this guy right here. Ferrocarril Nacional, General Urquiza. So we got a locomotive here. Locomotro. Number 658. Oh, there's English here. Look at this. Number 658 with a 460T wheel arrangement for a 60 centimeter narrow gauge. See, this is the kind of stuff that I have no idea about, honestly. These were used on the front line during the First World War. Cool. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I have no idea about. The, people who are like super nerdy about trains, they can look at these things and just be like, they know the wheel size, they know the gauge track that it's designed for, they know like probably what year it came out or maybe even like, you know, what company produced it, I don't know. I don't know any of that stuff. But I do want to see this stuff because I do like coming and seeing like old, I don't know, old industrial anything really. Like, I just think that stuff is so cool. So, all right, we've seen what we can see out here. I think it's time to pay the piper, so to speak. We'll go in. We'll, uh, we'll pay and we'll see the inside of the museum. All right, so we're inside. It cost 3,000 pesos to get in. And uh, they give you these little, two little tickets. And uh, already I can see, like look around this place, right? Just in like the lobby area where you come in, there's a bunch of stuff. And there's stuff going all the way down to the end and there's a whole second floor so there's like a lot of stuff to see in here it's really cool and I, like I said I'm not going to know what hardly any of this stuff is so everybody's got to help me out in the comments 
Yo, look at this. This is like some sort of a a boiler. I guess like showing inside what the the boiler looked like on the inside. See, this is this is exactly what I was saying. I have no idea, right? I didn't know that there was just a bunch of pipes and stuff inside this. I never even thought about what would be what's like inside the like boiler part on a steam engine. I don't know how this stuff works. It's pretty cool though. The idea of like steam power in general, just like, I mean, <laughs> powered the industrial revolution. Basically, you know, I read once that like the, the idea with the industrial revolution or the reason why it, uh, it went off the way it did starting in, uh, in Great Britain, right? was that uh, they had a lot of coal, and they used coal as a fuel source. And they needed a way to, like, uh, extract coal more efficiently. And so the steam engine was invented. And the steam engine, you used coal to power the steam engine. So you just ended with this, like, they ended with this loop that just sort of, like, uh, you know, reinforced everything, right? The more coal you were able to extract more efficiently, the more you were able to, like, power steam engines then they figured out ways to put steam engines on everything, right? Uh, from, like, machinery to do work in factories to, to, like, trains. Like, this guy over here and just... Everything compounded and bam. Industrial Revolution. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Look at this. Here's a... Ferrocarriles Argentinos train. Now, interesting story. Um... While we are here in Buenos Aires, I will tell you this. What my plan, my plan A for Argentina when I was here on my return trip was uh, that I wanted to um, get a train ticket on uh, one of these trenes argentinos, the passenger trains, right? Because I had seen a video from our buddy Charlie XP who you will remember from our video about the pizzerias, uh, he took a trip on Ferrocarriles Argentinos, on an Argentine train, right? Trenos Argentinos. And he um, got to take a trip and stay in a camarote, which is like the cabin, the sleeper cabins. And uh, it looked really cool, and I really wanted to do it. Um, but... Unfortunately, those sleeper cabins are extremely popular and they're very, very hard to get. Basically, like, in the beginning of the month, in the first, like, I don't know, hour or so that they're on sale, they just sell out. And you can get them online, but if you get them online, you need a DNI number, which is, like, the Argentine Social Security number. Basically, you need to be a resident or a citizen of Argentina in order to use the online website. So, my only option was I wanted to go to, like, a train station right when it opened in the morning on, uh, you know, the first of the month to buy a train ticket. And uh, it didn't work out. <laughs> it didn't work out. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take a train, uh, a train trip, which was the plan A. But the plan B is going to be good, too. And you're going to see where we're going to go after our stay here in Buenos Aires. But that's just an aside to let you know that, uh, well, really, that Charlie XP has a great video about... Uh, Trenes Argentinos, and you should go check it out. I'll link it in the description. All right, what have we been looking at here? Well, we've been rambling. Cool old potbelly stoves, train horns, inside of like a old train car. Oh, these are, oh, this is a Toshiba. A Toshiba electric vehicle manufactured in Japan. This is like now, the cool thing about the Argentine uh, train fleet is the train and the Buenos Aires soup day, they use a lot of different kinds of cars. Um, so, like, for example, we came here on, uh, on a line that runs, like, I've been on it before, and they, they run, like, old, like, new German Siemens trains, but then I've, I've also seen, like, I think there are, like, old Japanese subway trains and like um, basically from like all different countries they run trains so you kind of never know it's kind of fun taking the Buenos Aires soup take because you never know like which train car you're going to ride on 
which is kind of neat as a tourist, you know. As, as a resident of Buenos Aires, it's probably no big deal. You probably get used to it, but I'm st I still think it's cool. What is this stuff? Old reel-to-reel -reel recorder. So some of this stuff, I'm not sure why it's in the... <laughs> like this. Like, why is this thing in the Railroad Museum? Why is an old reel-to-reel -reel recorder in the Railroad Museum? I don't know, but it's still, it's cool to see. It's cool to see old fire extinguisher. Like, this is like a big fire engine situation where you'd use a hose wheel this thing around. And this, too. Yeah, these must be like old horse-drawn horse-drawn fire uh, fire engines. Cool. God, there's a lot of stuff in here. Look at this. There's these cases with all kinds of old whatever the hell these things are. I don't even know what these are. This is like all old medical stuff. This is like, we, we saw a bunch of this stuff in the uh, Medical Museum of Cuenca in Ecuador. That was cool. That was a cool place. Check that out. Link in the description, of course. Wow, look at this. Where's this stuff from? Oh, this is from like the United States. Schenectady, USA. An ammeter. This is all like old electrical, electrical stuff. Wow, look at this. Cool. Although this is the Roca line, ran along the Roca line. Ferrocarriles Argentinos, electric trains running along the Roca line. Now, when we were here in Buenos Aires before, um, we. We're on the Roca line where we were staying. We're staying out in Wilde. And so like every day when we wanted to come into the city and see what was going on in here, we would hop on a Roca line. Oh, this is Mitre. Well, this is the from Retiro. But we would hop on the Roca line and we would go into Plaza uh, or um, Estacion Constitucion, right? Constitution train station. really cool thing about Argentina, about Buenos Aires, is the two train stations, the two major train stations, right? Like Retiro here, where we are, or like where we're right next to, and Constitucion, which is down like south of here. They're connected by a, a metro line, which is great, or uh, like a subte line. It's just great. You can come into one of them from like a train from far away, and then hop on the subte, head down to the other one, and catch a train heading out the other direction. So, like, if we were coming from Wilde, where we were, and we wanted to go out, like, north to, like, Tigre, in Zona Norte, the suburbs, like, northern suburbs of Buenos Aires, we would just come in on the train on the Roca line, then switch to the Subte, and go up, catch Retiro, take the Mitre line out. What the hell is this thing? Mercury Arc Rectifier. Device used to rectify AC and supply constant current to electric trains. Oh, look at that. Whatever it is, we need it to make electric trains work. So I'm glad they have it. Central Argentino, this is cool. I wonder how old this, this is. So these are the trains, I guess, that they used to run, yeah, like up to, on the electric lines, up from, from Retiro up to Tigre. Ferrocarriles Argentinos. Argentine designed rail kitchen coach. Oh, cool. See, this is the thing. This is why I wanted to take that long distance train, right? Have like a, a kitchen coach. You get like food, sit in a lounge car, meet some people, chat them up a little bit. I mean, it's not like the same as it is. Like this is all back in the heyday 
of Argentine drain travel where they would have like a full on kitchen and they would serve you like delicious meals on China with like the seal, <laughs> the like, but nah, not so much anymore. I think now you can get like prepackaged food sandwiches and stuff like that, which is cool, but like train travel in general, long distance train travel is sort of dying all over the place. It's not like it used to be. What else is around here? Okay, so no <laughs> something that I've noticed uh, just outside, although it looks like it's closed off this door, but like there's an old train car out there, which like I don't think we can go to because the door is closed. I'll ask someone and see if there's maybe this door is just closed and there's another way to like go out to the train car. Because, man, if we could, like, go check that thing out, that would be super cool. Old, uh, line signals. This is cool. Look at this. So you'd have, like, a lantern, right? That was, like, I guess, like a kerosene lamp, maybe? And then to change the color, you just have, like, a filter. And it's all on a switch. That's pretty cool. these old phones. Oh man, there's so many of them. Crazy wall telephones. Hey, Chicago, let's go. Hell yeah. Wow. This is like super old school, right? You just crank that thing up to get a little charge. And then the operator would pick up and you'd have to tell him where you'd want to call. Michigan 259. And they'd like plug the wires into this thing and connect your call. No dialing, no automation, none of that. It's crazy. You know, we actually saw in a video about, uh, where were we, Cordoba? Outside of Cordoba, Visha General Belgrano. Uh, there was a like a automated switchboard in that museum up there, the museum of the uh, of the city, right? They had that automated switchboard. That nice lady demonstrated it for us. We actually, <laughs> that's where we met our buddy Charlie XP for the first time. He happened to be there when we were there shooting. It's crazy. It's a weird thing that we met him because like uh, we were there before. We made a video from. Vigiano Belgrano and the museum was closed so we had to go back like a week later and we just happened to go back on the day that he was there we happened to be there at the time that he was shooting he was shooting a video there too I'll link all of those videos both mine and his down in the description of course yeah we met him super cool guy we have a timeline of the development of the rail here in uh, in Argentina or in Buenos Aires, I guess it's in Argentina, like totally right, because they're this is going out through Santa Fe, Cordoba. I'm not gonna look at the entire timeline. I do like a good timeline, but it is pretty extensive. There's just so much to see here, honestly. Rail samples, different types of rails, like cross-section. Cool. I never think about that. The different types of rails, like the cross-section of them and how many different types there are. Pretty crazy. There's another one of those uh, little rail car, little like hand cart, yeah. This one motorized also. Just running on a tiny little, tiny little like one stroke motor. One stroke, two stroke, I don't know about motors. What do I know? Another little tiny, teeny tiny locomotive. Look at this thing. 
it runs like this way, but I guess you sit facing that way. Cool. The most modern mo electric motor coach of Republic of Argentina. This is cool. I really, I really got to find out if we can get back on that train car. I've, ever since I saw that train car back there, I've been thinking like, oh man, we should, we should <laughs> see if we can go on that train car. I'm very distracted by it. It's like right over there. There's another rail car, a little Drury rail car manufactured in London, England, the beginning of the 20th century. Used for carrying the hierarchical technicians specialized in track control and fault detection so as to avoid accidents. That's a good idea. And, uh, oh, look at this. In the middle of the railway museum, we have a ship. Model of the cargo steamship SS Don Benito, which uh, its main activity was to fetch charcoal from England, later served as rail locom locomotive fuel. Oh, that's why it's here. Oh, but on March 27th, 1917, 1917, the ship sank. Oh, it collided with another ship. Are you kidding? SS Ultonia? That's unfortunate. Benito, owned by the Buenos Aires and Pacific Railway Company. Okay, so I asked, and you can go in that train car out there, you just need a guide to do it. They don't let just people wander around in there, which makes sense. Um, but the next guide, I think, is going to be available in half an hour. So we're going to be here. We'll go upstairs, and we'll take a look, see what's up here. We'll hang out for half an hour, and then... We'll go check out that rail car out there. I'm super, super excited about that, honestly. I keep going back to these cameras. These are super, super cool. It's very cool, you know, that I have this tiny little camera that's basically like the size of a glorified USB drive. And, uh, can shoot in, you know, like 4K, 60 frames per second, digital, record hours and hours of footage. And we're not, we're not actually that far, like, this is like, what, a hundred years from this, probably, that big honking thing that only took pictures and you had to, like, lug it around with a giant tripod and the first pictures, like, people had to sit still for like f a full minute or two in order for it to like properly like put put the image uh you know like on whatever medium they were capturing the image on whether it was like glass panel or whatever so you see those old f photos where everybody is just like staring straight ahead and they're not smiling and they just look like you know like like they had, they've had to sit there keeping that exact same look on their face for like a minute or two and then there's like one dude up in the corner whose face is just like all blurry because he like sneezed or he moved or something. Old photos, man. Old photos are really cool, actually. I'm, I'm, I really like them. We're like looking at old photos and, and realizing that like the technology that they had that went into it is sort of what like leads to the way that they look, right? Like the reason why you have old photos, the oldest, oldest photos are all just like people looking straight ahead at the camera. <laughs> It's because, like, they couldn't really do anything else. There was no... You couldn't, like, capture action shots back then, really. You know? Got old typewriters, adding machines. Comptometer. See, the, these weird old adding machines, like, I don't know how these things work, to be honest. Because they don't work like calculators. They look kind of like a calculator. 
but they don't work like modern calculators. And I actually have no idea how they work. Um, maybe someone knows. Maybe someone who knows about these old adding machines can tell me how exactly this thing works like in the comment, because I have no idea. All the different seats, comfy train seats, leg rests, it's very nice. Now, of course, I haven't taken a long distance train. Only, only trains I've really taken are like commuter and like subway trains, metros and stuff like that. And they don't have those. But some of the buses I've taken, they got these cool like leg rests. The seat like goes back, you can recline. It's really nice actually. Some of the bus rides we've taken, like, in our trip here in South America have been, like, really pretty nice, right? They're super cheap. The seats are comfortable. They're way more comfortable than airline seats. And, uh, they recline more. They show you, uh, like, a cool movie. Like, we saw, uh, Expendables 4 in Spanish when we were, uh, and whatever Fast and the Furious 10 or whatever the hell Fast and the Furious movie they're on in Spanish when we were uh, bussing our way around Ecuador that was fun and uh, got some random guns and swords because why are these in a railway museum? Winchester Carbine and a Sabre Oh, used by railway police. Okay, that makes sense. Railway police used these. Look at this. Now this makes me wonder, would they have this table like in a train car somewhere? God, I hope so. No, <laughs> it's the, the board of directors desk for the uh, West Railway Line. Company's management, new authorities appointed by Juan Domingo Perón's government, signed this railway line uh, nationalization. So this is the table where the board members sat, where Juan Perón nationalized the railway. That's actually quite historic. You know what that means. You know what that means, right? That means historical butts sat in these chairs. I wonder if Juan Perón actually sat in one of these chairs. Do you think Juan Perón showed up and like sat here in order to nationalize the railroad or did he just decree it? I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe his butt was there. Juan Perón's famous butt. Here's a cool thing we kind of missed when we were down here before. Look at this. This is a model of a ferry boat that they used to put rail cars on in 1929 to connect Entre Rios with Buenos Aires. They put the rail cars on a ferry, but there's like track on the deck of the boat. They bring it across the river. <laughs> That's so cool. Super cool. This old like replica of the ticket office. Where we got that little cardboard ticket. This is really cool. This is the tour guide who's about to take us out to the uh, rail car out there. So this thing, this is really cool. Oh, there's a bell. can ring the bell so we saw a train like this when we went out to visit uh, the uh, like Juan Perón and Eva Perón's uh, old like house like out in uh, San Vicente it's just outside of uh, Buenos Aires here and they had the president's train link link to that video of course in the description Look at the size of this thing. 
This is legit like way bigger than that train that we saw in uh, Rio Bamba in Ecuador. We weren't able to find a train museum, but we did find that one train engine, which was pretty cool to see. Really cool. You can sort of see inside. I'll let you guys see inside. I can't climb up there. This train is actually a lot like newer than I thought it was. It looks quite old, but like the thing on the side says 1949, which is really quite new. And they have this much older, much older uh, locomotive here that like they let the kids go on and like play with all the controls, which is cool. But look at this thing, this thing is gigantic. This really is huge. It's hard to see like how big it is, but trust me, it's, it's gigantic. It's like much, much older. This is really cool. We're actually right, right here, next to uh, Retiro train station. It's like right outside there. There was a train actually that just came in. I saw it come in. But like right over there, that's Retiro. All right, we do get to go onto the train coach. Very excited about this. Like I mentioned, we saw like a similar train coach, of course, much fancier. Um, outside of uh, Juan Perón's old house, they had the presidential train. We didn't get to get on the presidential train, but we get to get on this train. It's cool, like lounge car. The fireplace. See, this is what I'm saying about the golden age of rail travel. You can hang out here, listen to a record on the record player. The fireplace going while this train is like rolling down the tracks. Of course, you'd smoke, of course. Because everybody smoked back then. This is like. Uh, I want to say a little bit newer than like that tram car that we rode. We rode that really cool tram car down in Caballito. Link to that video in the description, of course. But man, like, you'd be able to get like a cool sleeper car experience like this. Look at these. Right? That would have been so cool. Of course, you'd have to like, you'd have to poop in that thing. I don't know if you can see this. It's very dark in here. There's a chamber pot. I have a sleeper, a little, little sink. Had a fan in case it was hot. This is so cool. And the, the bed folds up. So like during the day, you can sit on this like a couch. So cool. And then this one's flipped the other way. The bed's on this side. And the sink and stuff. The sink like folds up into there, which is really cool. This is cool. Man, I'm telling you, golden age of train travel. I really would have wanted to to ride this thing. The bathroom car. Oh, the kitchen. Kitchen. 
kitchen where they'd make delicious food for you. We got to go in the train car. I think we get to go in this other train car too. So that would that would have been like a sleeper car, right? Sleeper car with like the lounge section in the back. You totally can't see in there. It's just a reflection of me, basically, because it's so dark in there. But with like the lounge car in the back where we saw with the record player in the fireplace, and then up here, I'm guessing this is like a full-on maybe dining car or lounge car of some sort. Let's go in and find out. Oh yeah, this is like full-on comfy lounge car. Lo <laughs> siento. ¿Subieron alguna vez a un tren con alfombra? No. ¿Nunca? Se imaginarán que lo habrá usado, ¿no, chicos? El presidente. El presidente, muy bien. Este es el coche presidencial de 1920, construido en los talleres de remedio escalada, acá en Buenos Aires. En un principio lo utilizaban para los directivos, pero de Ferrocarril del Sur, antes de llamarse Roca. En los 50, cuando el sistema ferroviario pasa a mano del Estado Nacional, destinan este vehículo para llevar a los presidentes. Y viajan cuatro presidentes. Juan Domingo Perón, Arturo Ilia, José María Guido y un primer ministro italiano de nombre Giovanni. Cuenta con madera caoba, techo de yeso, ornamentos que son de bronce, hogar a línea y esto como una especie de sala está, justamente. Con algunas modificaciones, como por ejemplo los sillones que eran de cuero y los ventiladores que eran de bronce. Muy bien chicos, acá está, hoy, hoy vamos a descubrir, vamos a abrir la puerta secreta que tiene el presidente. Acá tiene una puerta camuflada que hoy los chicos a, a las 6 de la mañana le pusieron la puerta del terror. ¿Todos, ¿todos animan a pasar la puerta del terror? ¿Sí o no? ¿Son todos este, valientes para pasar la puerta del terror? We did get to see the president's train car. This guide is good. I like him. He's having fun with the kids. It's very fun. He told him there was like a secret behind this door. He said, this is the presidential train car. And hey, there's a presidential secret behind this door. He asks, like, do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? Very funny. Fireplace. This is cool. Take a look around the president's train car. Four presidents. See how much nicer the president's sleeping car was than the regular sleeping cars. Uh, the answer is it was much nicer. Nice dresser. Nice bed. Private bathroom. Nice private bathroom. President's conference room where you meet with the cabinet. See, this is why, this makes sense why they wouldn't let us come out here without a guide. I did not know that we were going to be actually able to see the president's train cars here. That's really, really cool. I mean, we were talking about that. We were just talking about that before we got in this car. Hey, wouldn't it be? We didn't get a chance to get onto the president's train car. Well, apparently we did. And it looks like he said there was another, like, bedroom car here. Sleeping car. So maybe that previous one that we saw wasn't the president's sleeping car. It could have been for, like, I don't know, the cabinet or something. It did have a bunk bed in it. I would think that the president wouldn't be sleeping in a bunk bed. Like, they're not going to make the president bunk with, like, you know, with, like, the Minister of Defense or something. Probably not. So I guess this is the presidential. So this, I think, is the president's. Machina de be Typewriter of the beginning of the last century? Okay, yeah. There's a beautiful bed. Private bathroom. And the kitchen. That kitchen, the presidential kitchen where they cooked meals for the president. Alright, so that's it. We saw it. 
we saw the National Railway Museum, and it was really cool, actually. Like, there was a lot more stuff in there than I thought there was going to be. So it's definitely worth the 3,000 pesos to get in. 3,000 pesos at the current exchange rate. It's about uh, $2.50, roughly. So totally worth it. Um, the president's train car is in the back. Like, that is so cool. We were just saying, like, man, it'd be cool to go on this train car. We saw one like this, uh, you know, outside San Vicente. And, uh, but we didn't get to go on it. Well, now we did. We went on the president's train car. And it's really cool. Four different presidents uh, rode in that train car, including Juan Perón. Um, so, super cool. Super cool. I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, I'm really, really glad that we came to see this. I really am. Like, this is, this is a cool place. If you do want to come and see this place, um, basically... Retiro train station is like right around the corner. So basically you get out of Retiro train station and you come out like where uh, Torre Monumental is and just go right and then go right again onto Avenida Libertador and walk down Avenida Libertador until you get sort of like to this intersection right here. Uh, and basically like you're right here, right across from the uh, Hotel Emperador. Yeah, come check it out. This place is really cool. Definitely worth it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, plenty more videos coming from here in Buenos Aires. So stick around. We'll see you in the next one.